Welcome to a Wonderful Journey, where we'll be studying once and for all, is Alias really the best show of all time, or is it, well, shall we say, we'll be doing this by me re-watching the show and taking rigorous notes during each episode. I will then analyze the deep themes of every single episode, themes like, can Jennifer Gardner actually act? How hot are daddy issues? Is Daddy Warbucks ever actually going to sing? How animated does the show really get? Were the 2000s really that good? Let's jump into it. Episode 1, titled Truth Be Told, Waste No Time Getting Into It, where Scarlett Johansson clearly got all of her inspiration for her Black Widow role. Speaking of hot and heavy, we get our very first kiss in under 5 minutes. And speaking of that, it's everybody's favorite early 2000s song that is a perfect embodiment of every single rom-com, Fill Me a Buttercup. What a perfect sample. I can't believe that I heard it. It's so good. And just like that, we now know our very favorite hero, Sydney Bristow, is engaged. The tagline of the show, grad student by day, Spy by Night, really rings true. Before we know it, Sydney Bristow is on her way, getting briefed on her very first mission by the evil-looking we Weasel Man. She gets briefed, and then she has to go on a quick, brisk jog, and all of a sudden, before we know it, at the crisp time of 13 minutes and 24 seconds, we see our very first shirtless boy, and man, Rocket Raccoon's really got a good set of abs on him. Just like that, Sydney Bristow and her new partner are now on their way to Russia to get some secret spy device, well, we're never really given any more information about, except for what it looks like, but we aren't told that we more see it, and I'll describe that a little bit later in the video. Sydney Bristow goes to take pictures of this thing, and while she's going to take pictures of this thing, her uh, boyfriend, now fiancé, who got very upset because he just recently learned about all of her spy activity, calls her while he's very drunk, and she's, he starts leaving a voice message for her. This voice message is intercepted by, what, her daddy? I can't believe that, and the evil-looking weasel man from the spy agency, they then send a group of spies to take care of this situation. After he drunk calls her, Sydney Brusso, she takes the perfect picture, and then her and her new partner, they take off. After she gets back from her secret mission, she then goes home to find her boyfriend, what, dead? He's dead? In the freaking bathtub? Can you say fridged? And just like that, she then has a very bad day. She goes to yell at Weasel for killing him, and Weasel essentially says, Hey, you messed up, and you told him your very dark, darkest secret. It's all your fault. And then she gets mad. She walks outside to see that her car's been towed. She's so sad. Man, this day is straight dookie. She gets a new car, which is a nice new red truck, and it looks freaking sick as heck. She's in the parking garage, and then, oh no, she gets ambushed by two looking weird dudes. As they're fighting her, she starts on a run. This brings our total, at the end of this sequence, our total of butts kicked by Cindy Bristow to a total of one. This is a number that I'm sure is the girl from seeing this episode during my rewatch, but man, one butt kick so far is so very good. She didn't get saved by her daddy. She's so mad at him. I hate that guy. He's so mean. But he does try to help her out. He says, you've been working for the bad guys all this time. You didn't even know you were working for the bad guys because you thought they were the good guys all this time. But have you ever actually been to any of the good guy places like Langley or anything? And she says, no, I haven't. And he said, I know, right? This is what you need to do to ha to not have them try to kill you anymore. And she says, screw you, dad. She then leaves to go get some more help from Maka Raccoon, which really makes no sense. And just like that, she dyes her hair red to look exactly like Black Widow. Man, what a ripoff that character was. Stupid Scarlett Johansson. She flies back to the same installation that she had to climb into before, but this time she's all by herself. She has no backup and no partner. Sydney Bristow really sneaks in and she starts trying to fight, but then before you know it, she gets captured and she starts getting interrogated by the evil-looking mean man. The evil-looking mean man asks her lots of questions, and in the process of interrogating her, she does a very cool move where he asks her a question and she spells bite me backwards, and it's so very clever and good. It's a line that my sister thought was one of the most clever lines she'd ever heard of all time. The first time that she heard it, it's so good. Before we know it, Sydney breaks out and she kicks that dude's butt, bringing a running total of butts kicked by Sydney Bristow to two. And then two more guards run in. Of course, that brings our number to a total of four butts kicked by Sydney Bristow. And we're not even done with the first episode yet. Sydney Bristow, she then runs and finds the secret device that she was looking for before. But not before two more guards break in. She kicks two more butts, bringing the total of butts kicked by Sydney Bristow in this episode to a total of six. That's a crazy number of butts kicked by Sydney Bristow. She takes the device. The device looks like a very weird red floating ball. And then when she grabs the device, it pops like water? I don't really understand what this is, and it's never really explained. But she does take it back to the evil-looking weasel man, and she yells at him and says, I can't believe what you look at me do. You he, Here you go, and you're evil and all this time? And then she gets very mad at her. Man, what an empowering moment for all womankind everywhere, and also, more importantly, for our favorite superstar, Cindy Bristow. Cindy Bristow then goes, and she sees Vaughn. Holy crap, have you seen how va hot Vaughn is? What a 10. What a 10. I can't believe that it's this far into this show, and we haven't even seen that many hot guys. But man, Vaughn makes up for all of the lack of hot guys. She then gives Vaughn her written report of how she's been working for the bad guys all this time, and she volunteers to be a double agent. We're not told at the end of the first episode if she gets okay to be the double agent. She just goes to the gravestone of her ex-fiance, who's now dead, and she sees her daddy. Ah, uh, and Daddy Warbucks! He's a double agent, and he's been working for the good guys all this time? I can't believe that! Her phone rings. Is it the answer for 
if she's going to be a double agent? Is it Weasel saying he knows that he tried to become a double agent? Is it Weasel with their next mission? What's going to happen with our favorite hero, Sydney Bristow? Those of you guys will have to tune in next time to find out.